exhilarating snows of Switzerland. Here, the favorite pastime is skiing, but while the thrills are taken for granted, few people worry about the spills until it's too late. And then it's a job for the SOS men. When the mountain railways and ski lifts were constructed, it became necessary to have SOS men permanently on duty. Accidents happen to experienced skiers as well as novices. At this SOS station at Corviglia, one of four in the region of St. Moritz, six rescue teams are kept busy from December to April. Every minute counts when a man is lying injured in the snow, so even when it's quiet, the men occupy their time with practice rescues. The men, two to a team, are all first-class skiers with a knowledge of local landmarks and danger spots, and the cold, dispassionate courage that's needed for these rescue operations in all weathers. Already trained in first aid, the men receive regular instruction from a doctor to keep them abreast of latest medical advances, in, for instance, the treatment of fractures and shock. But gentleness is something they don't have to be taught. Even in practice with colleague Carlo Luminati, gentleness is an instinctive reaction. At least he has some consolation for being the guinea pig, but don't get any ideas. Although brandy is part of standard rescue equipment, there are easier ways of getting a free drink. Since the rescue system began at St. Moritz in 1928, thousands of injured skiers who might have died from exposure have been saved. On the slopes of mountains like these, 100 broken leg casualties and more than 400 stretcher cases were rescued by men from the four St. Moritz stations during the last winter sports season. Mario Walther, who has been braving the elements in this way for nine winters, supplies the experience in this team, but his lieutenant, John Eugster, has proved his value in many an emergency. Every winter, between four and 5,000 people go skiing at St. Moritz. They have good reason to be grateful to that tough and skilled body of men, the SOS. Yeah.